Hey, just when you thought the dust had settled, there's yet another shakeup in D.C. Jack Smith, the special counsel with a personal vendetta against Trump, is stepping down just before the president-elect takes office. Is Smith just getting out of the swamp before Trump has a chance to fire him? Because believe me, that's what he's going to do. Or is he trying to save himself from being prosecuted by going into hiding somehow? What does this mean for Trump's legal battles and the justice system itself? Today, we're getting into the story that has everyone talking. Let's get into it. Hey, guys, welcome back to the channel. So here's the big question. Why did Jack Smith, the Biden DOJ's pick to go after Trump, suddenly call it quits? While his resignation came right after a Supreme Court decision on presidential immunity, and that threw a monkey wrench into his entire case against Trump. Now, could it be that Jack Smith saw the writing on the wall? Many say that he was using his legal powers as a weapon, a move designed not to uphold the law, but to meddle in politics. He was doing election interference, the same thing the Democrats have been doing to Trump since the day he came down the escalator in 2015 to announce he was running. The so-called big stand against Trump might actually have been nothing more than a political stunt. Now, as we dig a little deeper, it only gets a lot more interesting. This isn't just about one man leaving his job. It's about what his role represented. Jack Smith was specifically chosen by the Biden DOJ and his track record less than stellar. Jack Smith's history with Trump goes back a while. Most of America doesn't know why the Biden DOJ chose Smith in the first place to be the special counsel to go after Trump. Jack Smith was an assistant U.S. attorney in Nashville, Tennessee. The U.S. attorney, David Rivera, was leaving his post. And under a situation like that, they usually bump up the top assistant U.S. attorney to take their place. That was Jack Smith. But this time, the president chose another guy, David Cochran, instead, leaving Smith in the dust because he knew that Jack Smith was a crooked prosecutor, especially after having a case against Virginia Governor Bob McDonnell, a Republican, overturned nine to zero by the U.S. Supreme Court. You can't get those nine people to agree on what to have for lunch. Jack Smith resigned in protest. The president who decided to bypass him was Donald Trump. The Biden DOJ knew that Jack Smith held a grudge against Trump over that, and they knew that he was a crooked prosecutor who would go to extreme levels to get Trump, and he did. Coincidence? Or is there a pattern here? Meanwhile, some heavy hitters on the conservative side, like attorney Mike Davis and commentator Rogan O'Hanley, are saying enough is enough. They want accountability, transparency, and a thorough review of everything Smith did while he held the role as special counsel. And it doesn't stop there. House Judiciary Chairman Jim Jordan of Ohio is also on the case, demanding that all records be preserved for further investigation. None of this bullshit like they did on the January 6th committee where they deleted all their data just before the Republicans took over the House. This isn't over, guys. It's just the beginning. And just when you thought the story couldn't get any bigger, Elon Musk has entered the chat room. That's right. Musk himself has called out Smith's actions, saying the misuse of legal authority has gone too far and can't go unpunished. Musk's message is resonating within the conservative community where people are fed up with what they see as a pattern of weaponized justice aimed solely at conservatives across the United States. It's like Musk is amplifying what many of us have felt for a very long time. There can be no unity until there is a reckoning. But this shakeup, it isn't limited to the legal world, guys. We're seeing shifts in the media, too. We just did a story yesterday a video on CNN shaking things up and getting rid of top talent and bringing in new people for a digital version of the show because they're hemorrhaging money. In a surprising twist, Patrick Sung Xiong, the owner of the Los Angeles Times, he just fired his entire liberal editorial board. That's a liberal paper deciding that it's time for balance? I don't think so. But who would have thought, right? Maybe the owner saw the bias and finally said, you know, enough. This move is just one of several we're seeing across legacy media. With USA Today and the Washington Post opting not to endorse a Democrat presidential candidate, the message, bias isn't profitable anymore. And people want transparency because you know what? Their wallets are getting thinner at these media companies. It's hard not to see this as part of a much bigger transformation, a realignment, if you will. Historians like Oswald Spengler once spoke of societal cycles where old orders crumble and new ones rise up. This could be one of those times, guys. 
It's like watching the liberal establishment slowly but surely start to cave in and then implode on itself. What some are calling a collapse, others view as a long-time overdue rise back of traditional values. That's what Americans want right now. With Trump's team set to take office, many conservatives see this moment as a course correction for the country, for our society, for our people. They're promising mass firings and more investigations to drain the swamp and restore a system that's been tainted by bias and political favoritism by the woke. And with the Supreme Court now backing presidential immunity, there's a renewed sense of confidence among conservatives that justice can be restored. Godspeed. Thank you for watching. Subscribe. Hit that notification bell if you want to be kept up to date with the latest in politics and news. I'll see you in the next one. Spread the word. From the bottom to the top, I grind every day. No time for haters. I'm here to slay. Stepping on a doubters, no time to rest. I'm like a freight train, I'm the best. Yeah, chasing dreams, no matter what it takes. I'm on fire and there's no breaks.